This week, we are starting a new series titled, I Have Decided. I have decided. I, have decided. I have decided. I believe that um, you don't, you could have picked a better day to come into this house because somebody in this house is going to make some decisions before they leave here on the day. Some of us have already made a decision. But before you leave here today, you're going to have to make a decision on the day. So we're talking from this... Uh, series I have decided. My theme for today is going to be this. My subject for today's teaching is going to be decisions dictate destiny. Mm -hmm. Decisions dictate destiny. I'm going to read from you from Luke chapter number one verses number five through thirteen and if you hold it right there I'm going to read also from um, Luke chapter number one eighteen through 21. If you jaywalk on down to verse number 45 I'm going to read that as well. Okay. All right. Let's go. It said, when Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah. And his wife, Elizabeth, was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they were both very old. Some translation says barren. You know that word barren simply means that there was no production. Some of us feel like we are in a barren season right now, and there's no production. But that's not the end of the story. So one day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple for his order was on duty that week. Verse number nine, and was and was the custom of the priest. He was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was burning, was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. Verse number eleven, while Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the incense altar. Verse number twelve, Zechariah was shaken. And overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, somebody say, but. but. The angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. I want to tell somebody on today, God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. Mm -hmm. We skip down to verse number 18, verse number through 21. It says this. Um, it says that Jesus was showing his disciples they should all Okay. And so one day Jesus told his disciples a story to show them they should always pray and never give up. All right, that ain't what we had. Yeah. Now let's do this. Let's go down to uh, verse number 45. Verse number 45, it says this. God, God does everything. He tells the, uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth all these things was going to happen. And it gets down to verse number 45. You know, they're old. You guys know the story. It was old. It was past childbearing age in the natural. But how many of you know if God tells you something that it doesn't look like it's going to happen in the natural, you know what God is going to do? God is going to do something supernatural. Whatever God has to do to get the blessing to you, God is going to do it. Uh, you guys know the story. God tells the children of Israel they're going to get to the promised land. So what he do? He opened up the Red Sea and makes it a highway. Uh, God, they didn't have any food while they was in the wilderness. God rained down manna for, for 40 years. They shoes never wore out. So whatever God has to do for you in the natural to get something to you, God is going to do it. Mm -hmm. Nothing yeah, can yeah. throw the plans of That's God. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Come on, nothing. Nothing yeah. means nothing. Nothing means nothing. 
God wants to get it to you, that's what's going to happen. He wants to get it to you, that's what's going to happen. Nothing will stop. So, verse number 18 says, Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in her years. Then the angel said, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was, it was he who sent me to bring you this good news. I'm going to pause right there just for a minute. Some of us will look for the angels to come and tell us something. Somebody will look for Jesus Christ himself to tell us something. But the same way that Jesus sent his messenger in the form of an angel on, is the on. same way that I believe that God has sent you here for you to hear a word through a man or one of God to speak into yeah. your life and Amen. tell you what God said yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Don't discount what God is doing. And don't discount how he will do it. Amen. Don't Amen. discount who he will use to get it to Amen. you. That's right. Amen. Just because it doesn't come in a form, shape, or fashion that you think it should. Amen. Don't count God out. That's Amen. right. God is no respect of persons. He can do whatever he wants, what he yes. wants. He doesn't need your permission nor my permission. Amen. But he does need your participation. Amen. 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 Verse number 20. It says, but now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be solid and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words were certainly. Somebody say certainly. Not if. Not maybe, not it might, but it will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Amen. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. Mm -hmm. Don't get frustrated in your waiting. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't get frustrated in your waiting. Don't get frustrated in your waiting. Last verse, last verse, verse number 45. Now, this is Elizabeth. Now, watch this. I love this. It says, you are blessed because you believe. Uh -huh. You are blessed because yes. you have the things. Yes. You are blessed because you have the houses. You are blessed because you have the cars. You are blessed because you have the stuff. Now, it says, you are blessed because you believe. Yes. What the Lord said Hallelujah. he would do, yes. it is done. Amen. You are blessed because you believe the Lord would do what he said. Yes. Some of us count on the blessings when the things happen. Yes. But he says you are blessed when you believe. Yes. You, you are blessed when you believe yes. what he said is true. You are blessed. Yes. When you believe that he will do what he said he would do. Some of us get frustrated because we wait on it to happen. Mm -hmm. But it happened the very moment that you received that God That's said. Right. Right. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm, teaching, I'm, I'm teaching you how to speak to the mind. When we wait on it to happen, we get frustrated. We start trying to perform it for God. And so we are trying to climb up the mountain. And then when that method doesn't work, we begin trying to conjure up another way. We're still trying to climb the mountain. Like when you believe it, when you believe the thing that God said that he would do, you are already blessed from that. I'm trying to teach you how to speak to it. I'm trying to teach you how to speak to it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you, so listen, you, you guys know as always, I want to start this out with this axiom right here. I want to start this out with this. That your belief system determines your root system. Mm. Wow. And your root system determines how fruitful you will become. Wow. That's good. Your belief system determines your root system. And your root system determines how fruitful you will become. Mm -hmm. You know, because we, we, we see the outer part. Like, we see the leaves. We yeah. see all the fruit. We see all that stuff. But how many of you know the, 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 the fruit and the leaves essentially come from what's in the root? Come on, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. We see all of that stuff. We see the fig 
figs. We see the, all that stuff. We see all the fruit. We see the leaves growing from all that. But all of that stuff comes from the root. So if the root is not right, if your belief system, if your belief system, if your root is not right, then there's no fruit. There's no production on the outer part. So sometimes if we don't like the outer part, we don't see because the inner part is not right. So if the root systems are not strong, the root system, the root system don't have the, the right nutrients in it. That's called faith. If you're not putting faith in the root system, then we don't see a manifestation on the outside. Now, now don't miss this. Now, it doesn't happen because God did not promise it or God does not say it, but because our root system isn't right. Our root system isn't isn't right. So, um, so, so as I was traveling back on on uh, this morning, me and my wife, we had to conquer, divide and conquer on, on this weekend. My daughter had a soccer game here. Deshaun had a uh, basketball tournament in Georgia. So I got up early this morning, drove back from Georgia. And as I was leaving out this little city that I was in, um, there was like townhouses, big uh, condo-like type places, like huge, like everywhere. I'm talking about like everywhere I drove, coming down the highway, like it was huge apartment buildings. I'm talking about like amazing, like massive, right? Mm -hmm. And so like I, I'm looking, like literally, like every like 100 feet, like there was these townhouses, these, these big buildings coming up. And it was residents. And I'm like, this does not fit this little town. Mm -hmm. You know, last week when I said, you know, my wife's like, hey, sometimes like what we want doesn't match the season that we are in. And so like, I'm like, this doesn't, this, like what is going on here? And I literally have this conversation to myself, like, some, I'm missing something mm -hmm. because it doesn't look like all of these big old townhomes or uh, townhomes, all these big apartment buildings should be in this little city. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm missing something. And so as I got on down the interstate, what I seen was it was this big massive uh, 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 car plant that was being built. I think it was a Hyundai plant. If you guys know, I know uh, Rodney, he works at Mercedes, and you ever drove by that place in Vance, like it's massive. Like you drive like, almost a mile, and you still see it. Like you don't get past it. And so as I began to see uh, uh, this big massive car factory being built, I said, ah, that's it. They're not building for where they are. They are building for what comes. They're not building for what they are, but they are preparing for what's coming. They're not, they're not building based on what they are. They are believing that because this big massive car manufacturer is coming in, that more jobs are going to be created. And those jobs are going to drive people to be take residence there. So they are believing not for what they are. They're believing for what is coming. They made a decision to say, you know what? This is where we are, but we're believing that because this is happening, then that's going to happen. They, ha they made a decision and said, because that's happening, then we need to prepare for what's about to happen. Your belief system determines your root system. And your root system determines how fruitful you will become. And this is what the enemy does right here. I want to give you this point right here. If the enemy can steal your hope, he steals your harvest. If the enemy steals your hope, he steals your harvest. Sometimes if, if, like, like if we lose hope, then what else do we have to hold on to? See, hope uh, talks about our future. Faith is now. Hope talks about our future. And if the enemy can steal your hope, he steals your harvest. Because harvest, because we rarely reap in the same season that we plant. Come on, man. Mm. We rarely reap in the same season that we plant. So if the enemy can steal your hope, he steals your harvest. But Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 31 says it like this. It says, but those that trust in the Lord yeah. Come on, come on. Those that trust in the Lord yeah. will find new strength. They will yeah. soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Yeah. 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 Some translations.
Bible says those that wait, wait on the wait, Lord. But if our word talks about a waiting on the Lord, it's not talking about just a waiting. It's talking about a trust in the Lord. Yeah. Waiting, when the Bible tells you to wait, it's not talking about being passive. It's not talking about don't do nothing. <laughs> but it's talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. while I wait, yeah. I will still yeah. trust yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. While I wait. Yeah. While I wait. Yeah. While I wait. Yeah. The second thing I want you to get is this. Things don't end because of what happened. This is good right here. This is, this is one of those tweets right here. Things don't end because of what happened. Things end because of what's about to happen. Things don't end because of what happened. Things end because of what's about to happen. So, so watch this. So watch this. Um, that's why Isaiah 43, 19, you guys know it by heart. It says this, for I am about to do something new. Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, see, I have already begun. Do you not see? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry Wasteland. Yes. You guys know I taught you this before. What is he talking about? He says, the first time I delivered you through the Red Sea, the next time I'm delivering you through the wilderness. Some of you thought the wilderness was a bad place, but everything that they needed in the wilderness, God supplied it. Just because God doesn't do it the same way he did it last time doesn't mean it's not God. Yes. And watch this, watch this. I love this right here. So, so listen to me. So some of you were thinking just because it ended, mm. that meant it was over. Mm -hmm. The thing ended because God simply was trying to do something new. Yes. yes. I'm going to speak to somebody right now. You thought things was just happening. You thought that just happened. You thought that, that things were just happening. No. It's the new thing that God is doing. Uh -huh. You 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 thought it ended because this and this and that. No, it's the new thing yes. that's happening. I'm gonna say it again. Somebody need to get it because somebody yes. just came out of a bad situation. Yes. Somebody is coming out of a struggling situation right yes. now, and you thought it was you. You Come thought on. that situation yes. had yes. control yes. over you, but God is that. orchestrating that thing right now because yes. that is the new new. That is yes. the new that He is talking about yes. in Isaiah 43 and 19. You thought it was bad. You thought it was over. You mm. thought that, man, just because it didn't happen the way that I thought it was going to happen, mm. in my mind, I, I had the extra strategy right here. But God said, no, that's the new that I'm talking about yeah. for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so somebody yeah. right now, you ought, to, you ought to be clapping your hand. You ought to be saying, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I thought that was me. I thought that was me. I thought that was me. No, God said, that's the new that I'm talking about. That's the new that I'm talking about. That's the new that I'm talking about. You got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You got to get comfortable with how God is doing it. You got to understand that in this season, success in your next is found in your ability to embrace your now. Success in your next is found in your ability to embrace where you are right now. When you know that it's more, you won't settle for less. When you know that it's more, you won't settle for less. When you know that it's more, you won't settle for less. Good, good is no longer good enough. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If better is possible, yes. then good is no longer good enough. That's right. Come on, y'all talk to me. Talk to me. Tell your neighbor. Say, say neighbor, if good is if, if good is possible, if better is possible, then good is no longer good enough. God does not want you to settle for just being average in this season. God just doesn't want you to settle for just being good in this season because better is possible. And if better is possible, then good is no longer good enough. God is saying, you ain't got to wing it in this season. You just got to wing it. You ain't got to wing it in this season. You just got to wing it. Your chapter number two doesn't determine your chapter number 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come just on. because of what happened in chapter number two, that doesn't determine your chapter number 10. You got to know that 
the thing that you were buried in, whatever area that you were buried in, whatever area that you yeah, wasn't productive God. in, whatever area that you were not growing in, that this is a new season. Yeah. I believe that God has sent a messenger on today to tell you that you are no longer buried in this season, that he is making you productive in this season, that you are going to bear fruit in this season, that you're going to do and you're going to be everything. Yeah. That he has called you to do. Some of us have been asking God for something. And I believe that whatever you have been asking God for, whatever you are asking God for, you got to begin to prepare for it. Because he said in the word, whatever you ask in my name. My name. Yes. Whatever you ask in yes. my name. Yes. He says, then my father will do it. For you, whatever you ask in my name, he will do it. Not in your name, whatever you ask in my name, he says, I will do it. I love John chapter number 14, verse number 13. He says, whatever you ask the Father in my name is going to be done for you. If you look down at John chapter number 14, verse number 14, he says again, whatever you ask in my name is going to be done. If you turn over to John chapter number 14, verse number 16, he says, whatever you ask the Father in my name. Yes. Turn over to John chapter number 16, verse number 23, oh, verse 24. He says, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he says, it shall be done for you. I don't know what you are asking God, but the next time you ask God for something, tell me what are you going to do. I'm going to ask in the Father's name. Stop asking in your name. The next time you ask God for it, he says, ask in my name, and God is going to do it for you. Whatever you ask in my name. He says, whatever you ask in my name. Whatever you ask for in my name. He says he will do it for you. We got to understand in this season that God deals with us or he engages with everybody in the earth through covenant. Somebody say covenant. 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 covenant is a promise between two or more parties to prefer to perform certain actions. Uh -huh. A covenant is a promise between two or more parties to perform certain actions. You know, like we had a marriage covenant. In that marriage covenant, we, we make vows to say, hey, Based off this, mm. then this is what's happening. Mm. Um, there's two type of covenant that the Bible talks about. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, uh, conditional covenant, and they are unconditional covenant. A conditional covenant is this. When you rely on at least one party upholding certain <laughs> conditions, whereas <laughs> is, is when a conditional is when, you, is, is when one party says, hey, I'm going to do this. An unconditional covenant is this. Unconditional covenant involves no stipulations of any kind for the fulfillment of the agreement. God has made us throughout scripture some conditional covenants, meaning that if you do this, then I'll do this. He has also made us some un unconditional covenants that says no matter what happens and no matter what you do, this does not disqualify you from the blessing. Come on. Hey, whatever come on. happens, whatever storm happens, whatever comes, then I'm going to do this based on who I am. Thank I am God for that. Uh, the covenant with David was an unconditional covenant. We know that David was a liar. He was a cheater. Mm. He was an adulterer. He did some things. And yeah, I'll yeah, yeah, some did. of us right there because he says that, that David... Uh, uh, David was going to be a king. And just because what David did, did not disqualify David from the promise. Yeah, yeah. Right. Some of us may be walking in a season where we think just because of some things we did, disqualifies us from a promise. Right. Now, God doesn't take away the consequence of our actions, yeah, but yeah. are based on his behalf. I want to declare that God is going to still do some things for you and through mm. you based on who he is. Yeah, he is. Because yeah. God has a great work for you to do in the earth. So God yeah, says, God. it doesn't matter what you have what done. Now get it, there's still consequences for what you've done. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still able to resurrect uh -huh. 
the thing that you thought was dead. The area in your life that was barren it is no longer barren in this season. Elizabeth was barren. Yeah, yeah. But because God was going to bring about a judge. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Come on, somebody walk in. Hey, yeah, yeah. Elizabeth was barren, man. She was unproductive, yeah. meaning her, her, her womb was a graveyard in that yeah, season. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because God says a judge about this has a job to do because he's going to be a forerunner yeah. for Jesus. Yeah. Then something was going to happen, happen to, the, to a womb that was a graveyard. Yeah. Now, now, it had no production, meaning that nothing was happening. In order for God to bring about a judge through an Elizabeth, God had to do something supernatural. Can I pause right there for a minute and tell somebody that God is about to do something supernatural in your life? Because he has something that he has to get from you. He has something that he has need of from you. And so God is going to do something for you and he is going to do it through you. In this season, I'm saying God is going to fulfill some promises that he has ordained before you. You just can't get weary in the way. Yeah. And when you do get weary in your way, because you will, uh -huh. he says, continue <laughs> to plant, yeah. continue to serve, yeah. continue to come yeah. to church, yeah. continue to stay in my word, yeah. continue to be connected, yeah. continue to do it, because yeah. in due season, yeah. 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 in due season, yeah. 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 you will reap a harvest yeah. if yeah. you faint. Not yeah. if you faint not. Yeah. If you faint not. If now that's that's condition. Yes. He says if you faint not. Yes. If you faint not. Yes. I got five minutes to give you these five points right now. I call it five rules of engagement. Five rules of engagement based off the uh off the story of. Zachariah and Elizabeth. You know how it is. Things was going crazy. Things was going wrong. They was at a tough place and things began to happen. The five points I want to give you based off that story. Number one is this. Even when things seem out of control, God is still <laughs> in control. Yes. Even when things seem out of control, God is still in control. Some of us in a season right now, we feel like things are out of control. And I want to tell you that the scripture says when an enemy comes in like a flood, yes. God lifts up a standing. It may be out of control to you, but we serve a God that says, I'm still in control. I'm still control storms. I still am able to. To make a highway through the Red Sea. Yeah, we serve yeah, that type yeah. of God. So number one, you got to understand this. When yeah, 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 they yeah, yeah, seem yeah. like they are out of control, <laughs> God Thank is God. still you, in control. Yeah. Number two is this. Y'all know how I am. I'm just teaching you principles. I ain't teaching you any magic. I want to teach you principles. Because I want to teach you how to speak to the mountain. And not right. give you another way of trying to climb the mountain. So number two is this. God cannot lie. That's real simple, but it's true. God cannot lie. Thank Numbers you, chapter number 23, verse number 19 says, He is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. When he speaks, he acts. When yes. he makes a promise, he will fulfill it. Yes. So whatever yes. promise that God has told you, My God. just because it Thank has not God. happened, Thank just God. because it hasn't manifested in this season, God, God cannot lie. God. God. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. He just may not be in due season. Wow. Come on, man. Uh -uh. Number three is this. This one is real good right here. When it seems like God is lying because it looks as if the situation on, is winning, man. refer back to rule number two. <laughs> when it seems like God is lying because, it's, because it looks like the situation is winning, refer back to rule number two. Go back to rule number two. God cannot lie. So if God makes your promise, 
And it may seem like the situation is winning. It may seem like the storm is overtaking you. It may seem like the storm and the waves are overtaking you. And it may seem like you are not in your winning season. It may seem like the situation is much bigger than you. It's overtaking you. You got to tell yourself, I need to look back at room number two. God can not lie. If God said it, he's going to perform it. God said it, he's going to perform Now I got to get real to, close to you on rule number four. On rule number four, I got to get real close to you right here. You got to trust in God's principles and not only in his grace. Sometimes we just say, we start to do stuff and be like, God, I need your grace right now. But sometimes you only don't need God's grace, but you need God's principles. Because God's principles are the thing that's going to bring it to you. Grace is for salvation. That's why in Ephesians chapter number two, verse number eight, it says you were saved by Grace. Uh -huh. We can't add grace to everything and think God is going to give us a get out of jail free card. Sometimes you got to add principles and principles say this. You got to add principles to it. Yes. You got to add principles to some things. You got to put some principles to it. You can't just put everything on God. Yes, we do need grace. That's why he tells Paul, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Meaning that my grace is going to sustain you through it. But you still got to add some principles to it. What is that he says? You got to trust in the Lord. With all your heart, and lean not into your understanding. You got to trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not into your own oh, no. understanding because sometimes God will tell us to do things and it may sound crazy. Yeah, yeah. It may sound crazy, but if you just apply some principles apply to principles. it, then God is going to see you through it. You got to add some principles to it. Because here's what principles do. Principles are, are a moral, it's a moral rule that a Christian applies to anything and that rule is going to govern how you behave in that thing. Yes. Yes. Principles govern how you behave Principles in situations. Yes. Number five is this, because we got to get up out of here. Number five is this. You got to trust in God's timing beyond the trials. Oh, wow. Wow. You got to trust in his timing beyond the trials. Where do I get that from? It says because Zechariah mm. and Elizabeth, according to time, yeah. they were too old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According, to time, according to time, nothing was happening. Wow. He mm. couldn't make it happen, yeah. and she couldn't make it happen even according mm. to time. According yeah. to time. According to time. Mm. According to time. But God doesn't do things, watch this, God doesn't do things according to time. God does things according to the assignment. God does things according to the purpose. God does things according to the purpose. God does things according to what he has called you. God is not worried about time. God says, like, I'm doing it according to my promise. I'm doing it according to my word. If he needs to wait till you get 80 or 90, according to the promise, then that's just what he is going to do. The Bible declares that they were past childbearing age. Based on time, nothing was happening. Some of us feel like we're in a season now where we feel like we'd have missed the boat. Yeah. Some of us feel like we're in a season oh, right now where we'd have missed our time. And some hey, of us feel God. like we're in a season right now where, Lord, if I had a done it then, but it's too late now. Mm. I want to talk to you and tell somebody right quick for the next 37. You got to trust in God's timing yeah. beyond the trials. You got to trust yeah. in his power yeah. beyond the time. You got to yeah. trust in his promise beyond the situation. You got to yeah. trust in his power that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that you can ask, think, or imagine. You got to trust in his power to be that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you can ask, think, or imagine. You got to trust in his power beyond the trial. That's why we come to the last verse after they go through all that stuff. The angels come and tell Zechariah this is going to happen. Hey, uh, Zechariah didn't bleed, so the Lord said, I got to shut your mouth because you keep talking, you're going to forfeit the promise. Sometimes we just got to shut up because if you keep talking, we're going to forfeit the promise. We're going to put ourselves out of what God has told us to do. So they go all the way down to 44 verses and they get to the 45th 
verse, the last verse in chapter number 45, it says this. It says Elizabeth was blessed because she believed beyond the trial. She believed that the Lord would do what he said. Do I have anybody here on the day that says, Lord, I understand where I am. I'm in a barren season, but I'm blessed because of what you said. That you're going to do everything that you said that you would do. If you need that, come on, stand on your feet and give God a great big shout. Great, great big hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, God. Guys, we get ready to close. I want to tell you this. I wrote down this note. Times of crisis stretch us. But remember, true learning, watch this, true learning begins at the edge of your comfort zone. Yes. Embrace the tension and ask God, what do you want me to learn from this crisis? Yes. Not why. Not why. Why this crisis happening? Mm. And you got to be comfortable with whatever. Somebody say whatever. Whatever, whatever God tells you. Because sometimes, watch this, sometimes God doesn't give us the answer. Oh, yeah. The same way he didn't give Paul the apostle the answer. Paul says, I prayed three times. Three times. Mm -hmm. God didn't even answer Paul's request. But God says, but I will do this. I will give you the grace yes. to get through it. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. I will give you the grace to get through it. Thank you, God. Mm -mm -mm. My God. You just got to practice the principle. 